So, how are you, man? I'm good. Just got this, out from the gym. I'm here in LA. Yeah, this week was a roller coaster ride, wasn't it? Yeah, it was crazy, but fun. Because you guys won the Dove Awards again, too? Two of them. Yeah, so, best of best uh, How does it feel? It feels good. I mean, it feels, it just feels awesome to be respected by, you know, your community of, yeah. of fellow musicians. But I think even more so this time around, I was just more humbled um, by the people that we were surrounded by. You know, like all the artists that are all doing like amazing things around the world. You know, like I think this time around, the dubs became more than just music to me. It was so good to, to hear what Third Day is doing, to hear what Stephen Curtis Chapman is doing around the world, to, to just hear these artists that, that go out and do shows like we do, but they're just, they're about so much more than just music, you know? So it was just, it was so humbling. Um, so, um, you, you guys are named Group One Crew. Where does the name come from? Um, it, back when we first started, there was 13 original members. So uh, we all had our own different style, and um, I appreciated that from everyone. So I wanted everybody to stay as individuals. You know, I wanted them to be who they were. So, so we ended up being a group of ones. We didn't want to be meshed together like one look, one sound. We just wanted to be a group of individuals. So that's where we get group ones from. So. Also, we serve one God, one faith. We have one dream, so it's one is just a good representation of unity. All right. So, so it, it it was a group of thirteen members. How did it become three? Well, a lot of a lot of other ones just kind of like grew out of it. They went and did um, they did other other things like uh, one of the founding fathers, me and my boy Paul. Paul is in Dominica now doing missionary work. His brother went to be a chef and now does solo music. My friend Josh went to go work for a church um, in, in Dallas. My boy Benjamin produces and he does music still. Um, Liza's a mom now. Like everybody just kind of went their own separate ways. And it actually went down from, from, it went from 13 to just one, which was just me. And then... Mm -hmm. Uh, when my manager found me on MySpace and asked me if I wanted to do music and um, he knew of a label that was looking for a, a hip-hop group, he asked me if I could put one together and I still remember, you know, Pablo and Blanca from the original. So we just, that's how it happened. So just called him up and made it happen. All right, all right. Let's get to you. Let, let, let's go back to this week, the, the Dove Awards and, and, and the hectic stuff. Um, so you won... Uh, the Dove Award for Best Hip Hop Album. Did you expect that? Um. Well, it's it's funny because you never know what is being voted for. Like, if it's like the sound quality, is it the you know the quality of the record? Because I I can you know our, the quality of our record we can put up against anybody, like Christian or secular, because it's just it's a great record sonically and just in every way it's just a yeah, good record. It's master the writer and it's just banging. Yeah, it's and the songs are good. It's great pop music. Everybody can understand it, so it's great. Um, but in all actuality, you know, I really felt Lecrae, you know, Lecrae would take it home just because I feel this year, um, this year was a great year for Lecrae, and he did a lot for for hip-hop in, in general, especially for Christians who do hip-hop. You know, he killed it on tour. He, uh, he killed it on record sales. He just He just had a great year, so... To me, I give I give him, you know, a lot of props. Like we succeeded in the, like he succeeded in one way, we succeeded in another way, but I thought for sure, you know, he would be the one that takes it home, you know. To me, to me it's a shared it's a shared one. Him him and us, you know, in my heart we shared it cuz he he just had a great year. Did you say anything in your acceptance speech about that? Um, no, I don't do well in speech in the acceptance speeches, man. Every time I get up there, I get nauseous and I I, I, I stutter and I, I shake and you don't understand like I'm a I'm like a public speaker like I speak in front of thousands and I don't yeah. even get nervous but for some reason the Dove Award stage I just get so nervous so 
shaky that I just try to just get in and out. I try to say maybe 20 words and I'm out as quick as possible so that nobody notices that I'm shaking like a leaf. So. Let's talk a little bit about the album that got the Dove Award, best hip hop album, um, Out of Space Love. Uh, what's the theme of the whole album? The whole theme of Out of Space Love is simply we wanted to take people, metaphorically we called it out of space, but out of space what it meant was to, to, to where God is at, to where his love is at. So we wanted to take people on a trip through our music and bring you to where God was. The, the biggest point about this, this album was to make music that extended beyond the church. Like we didn't do anything that was formulaic as a church, as a Christian church group would do. We wanted to make music that, a, that someone in the church could take outside of the church and it knock and hit as hard as anybody else, any other secular group. And somebody who doesn't know God can listen to it and actually give it a shot you know, before saying anything. So it was more of a witnessing tool than, than anything else. And, and, and that was the point. We wanted to bring people who didn't know God to a place where you can experience God's love, which is why it was called out of space love. Not, mm. not the judgment, not the whatever, but his love. Because we believe in perfect love. All fear is driven out. All doubt, all insecurity is driven out. And God has an opportunity to speak to you yeah. on a very, a very um, basic level, which we all need, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, when you look at the album Out of Space Love, what's, what's your favorite track on that one? Man, to be honest, every track is is good. Like, I love them all. But yeah, but come on. Make at least, choice. I would say then, Manipulation is my favorite one. Manipulation. It's great that you picked that one because I just don't get that one. The lyrics, it's, it's, it, I think it's about... Um, driving out like, like the secular uh, message and the manipulation in the tracks and you're bringing a fresh and new sound and yeah. stopping the manipulation in the in the influence of the, the let's say secular music something like that i thought about that well see that's the thing whenever anybody hears the term manipulation they automatically think that it's negative because it's always used in a negative way, you know, like I'm being manipulated, don't manipulate me, don't manipulate other people. But manipulation, all it means is to change, to forcibly change the way something appears, looks, a thought, like you, you are messing with people's thoughts. Yeah. So what we wanted to do was make a song mm -hmm. that would hit in the club, that would hit in your car, that would hit um, and manipulate the way the world hears Christian music. Oh. So that was the whole thing because they have a stigma of what Christian music sounds like. Yeah. But yet when you throw on the song manipulation, any lost person will be like, dang, this is dope. This is Christian? Yeah. So right there, there is a manipulation going on because we're changing the way they thought Christian music was supposed to sound mm. like. And they are now becoming more like open that maybe not all Christian music is corny or bad. So right there, we manipulated their mind. You feel me? So that's what manipulation is all about. So when you're hearing it, it's about manipulating the way lost people hear God's message through music. Mm -hmm. um, See, that's the funny thing. Yeah. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't like dig deep into our our, our lyrics. Like all the lyrics are on the website. Yeah. And we describe why we make each song on the website. And a lot of super Christian people. Like, they don't ever take the time to either ask or look into it. They'll just, I'm glad you asked, because a lot of people will just assume that we're just making music that doesn't mean anything, that it's just dance music. But none of our music is empty. All yeah. of it has a very it has a very specific purpose. It's not just made just to be made. But it has specific purpose if you, if you would get past what you think about it and actually listen to it and really feel. Because even in my verse, I say, I got one verse to make you see past the fro in the shoes and feel the reason for the heating up inside of this room. Yeah. I'm a messenger who told you about, about the, the good, good news. news. Yeah, you know what no I'm saying? Like, people don't catch it. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's whatever. Yeah. It's but what, what does that comment do to you? When, when people give that type of comment, like, uh, out of space love that doesn't have any Jesus in it or, or it's superficial, what does that do to you? I think, it, I mean, it just saddens me. Because I, I feel that uh, Christians, most Christians live their life um, 
through somebody else's convictions. Mm. Mm-hmm. If they hear enough pastors say something is wrong, they'll believe it. Not because the Lord convicted them, but because they heard they're, it. They're, yes, they're hearing it from the pastor. So they're assuming if this is mass, uh, if everybody's in a mass agreement of this thing, then it's wrong. It's kind of like drinking. If the church is in mass agreement, the drinking is a sin when it's not a sin. Yeah. You know, be, being drunk is a sin, drinking yeah. is not a sin. Yeah. So if you see a Christian drinking instantly, you automatically judge them and think, well, they're not as hardcore as anybody else. Yeah. Because we've been fed this 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 ideology that drinking is a sin yeah. when it's not. So in the same way, I, it just reminds me of the of, of, of the weakest part of Christianity. It reminds me why a lot of people who aren't Christian don't want to be Christian because we judge ourselves without being properly knowledgeable Mm -hmm. about the heart of the person that you're judging, you know, Mm -hmm. like judge me after you speak to me. Mm -hmm. After you get to know me. Exactly. Don't judge me because you hear one of my songs and you think it's not Christian enough for you Mm -hmm. because I mean, you can read the Psalms, you can read song of Solomon, not every Psalm or song of Solomon's, said the name Jesus on it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I got one person hit us up um, on iTunes and was like, uh, you know, they don't say the name Jesus. They just say you or him or whatever. And I'm like, fool, read Psalms. <laughs> all, th- all throughout Psalms, all David does is say, but you, but you did this, you did this, mm-hmm. he did this, you know, in mm-hmm. him. He, that's all he does. He just references God. He yeah. doesn't say the t- term Jesus because Jesus ain't even come yet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, are you saying Paul? Are you saying that David's Psalms are not Jesusy enough? Then <laughs> he didn't say Jesus. You know, like people don't think about what they say. They just yeah. they just spit venom, and they just they're just it's just very ignorant. It's very ignorant, and it just it hurts me more than it does anything. Because I'm like, man, you guys have no idea. You just have no clue. I'm not mad at you, but I just really wish that we had just more intelligent, yeah. intelligent yeah. Christians that wouldn't throw the stone before conversing like we're supposed to do. Biblically, if we have a problem with one another, we're supposed to address it with one another. We're not supposed to go on a freaking social media website and blast each other. (laughs) We're not supposed to go on Facebook and say, these people aren't Christian. This isn't the right whatever. You know, like, that's that's not a biblical thing. You know, so it's just, it's just sad, but all it does is remind me that not a lot of people know their word. They just, we don't, we don't read the Bible enough. 